Uh, my name is Ksenia and I'm the marketing and project coordinator for White Bison. We also have Taylor Marquis uh, on the line. She is our project coordinator. She's on the line as well. And we will be helping you during this webinar, uh, technical support. Um, also in the end of the session, uh, you're welcome to ask your questions in the chat box. And then we will be collecting them and let Tanya know maybe about 15, 10 minutes before we close out the session. Uh, okay, and then uh, we will be recording this session and anyone who uh, missed it today, we will also have it available on valbrighty.com website under Valbrighty teaching section. And for anyone who doesn't know about White Bison, uh, we are a Native American Alaskan Native nonprofit organization located in Colorado Springs. We provide culturally based programs, training, resources that are geared towards recovery and prevention from alcoholism and substance use disorders. Mm -hmm. We have programs for adult treatment, youth treatment, youth prevention, family wellness, healthy fatherhood, healthy motherhood, programs that address healing from grief and trauma and reentry. If you would like to learn more about the programs, we will also okay, send a link. It's w um, in the chat box, we will have links. One would be for wellbrighty.com, whitebison.com, and wellbrighty store. Okay, and today the webinar is on self care. And I would like to introduce uh, our presenter, Tanya Schur. And Tanya is one of the White Bison's trainers. She's been involved with the Wellbrighty movement. For many years now, she facilitates medicine will and 12 steps and all other variety programs. So, hi, Tanya. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ksenia. Thanks You're for welcome. your help. Thanks for your help, Taylor. I appreciate your introduction. Uh, welcome everyone, all my relatives. Uh, my name is uh, Tanya ward -Sure, and I am in long-term recovery. No, I wasn't raised uh, in my culture or with the language. Uh, I identify as Blackfoot Métis, um, but I am learning as the ultimate act of resistance and decolonization, even in my old age. I am working to uh, learn the language uh, a little bit as best as I can. So I'm just uh, so delighted to be here. I want to uh, bring up my PowerPoint. Hopefully I can get that to work. Ah, so here we are. Uh, Self-care is a sacred responsibility. Uh, I want to uh, just uh, try to do my best to greet you in the Blackfoot language, the language of my grandmother. Uh, so if there are Blackfoot language speakers in the room, please uh, be, be, uh, be patient with me. I'm just learning. Uh, Red Deer, Alberta. Nina Anistau Lloyd Pulliam. Na Six Anistaya uh, George Warki Flora Collins. Kixixi Matsim Ochpawau. So, what I hope I said is uh, I greet you uh, from um, Amskapi Pokani, from um, where my grandmother was born in uh, Browning, Montana, and Red Deer, Alberta, which is where I am now. My father is Lloyd Pulliam. Uh, his parents were Florence and uh, uh, Orville, and uh, his grandparents were George Ward and Flora Collins, bringing in both the Blackfoot culture and the Cree culture together. Uh, and I greet you and shake hands with you all. So I want to acknowledge uh, the lands uh, that we come from. I'm here on the traditional territory of the Cree nations in Alberta, Canada, uh, the Sampson First Nation, Montana, Louis Bull and Ermanskin First Nations of Treaty 6, and the territory of the Blackfoot Confederacy, Siksika, uh, uh, Siksika uh, and Gana, and Pikani, also the Tutina First Nation and the Stony Nakoda of Treaty 7. 
Red Deer uh, has, has a river that flows through it, dividing Treaty 6 from Treaty 7, but it's also the homeland of the Métis Nation, now known as Region 3. So, you know, making ourselves known to the circle and to the creator uh, is a, such a good way of starting a circle. So I would just invite you in the chat to put your name and what territory you're from. So you can put your name in your first language or your Indian name, uh, that would be wonderful. Uh, just so you have a sense of who's here in the room and uh, what territories are represented. So I especially today want to acknowledge all of the Indigenous people in their fight for sovereignty over their lands and resources and the protection of the lands and waters and for the rights of the little ones that are being discovered now in unmarked graves across, the, uh, across Turtle Island, that they will be returned to their homes and to their families. So I want to begin this talk about, um, about self-care by starting with maybe one of the most profound but simple tools. I want to start with a smudge. And so if you have a smudge where you are, uh, I would invite you to uh, open your smudge uh, as we call, call in our ancestors, but also to help center ourselves. Over here in Alberta, it's two o'clock, it's midday. So I, I need to put some things down so that I can really be present with you this afternoon. To, uh, as one elder, uh, elder says, the ceremony centralizes us to the creator. If we think about ourselves on the medicine wheel, it will bring us to that center point uh, where we can really focus on our connection to all other uh, things that we are connected to. So with that, I'll light this uh, sage from uh, this right around me where, where I live, able to gather sage, and also to send out this uh, beautiful spirit across the interwebs, across the, the web of connections, the internet. And uh, I would ask you and invite you to pray in your own way, to uh, bring your whole self into this uh, circle of being. So I used to be a beautiful, Natanako e piso asu patanski. Ispamoke nin nabinatus. Sik sik samatsim och benan. Give thanks to you in these four directions and call to the spirit of the fire, the spirit of the land, the spirit of the water, and the spirit of the air to be with us in this circle now. We call to our grandmothers and great grandmothers from these four directions in the east where the sun comes from, in the south where we grow, in the west where we uh, experience that letting go, where we experience the coming of the stillness and the night. And in the north, the direction of our elders, in the, the direction of the winter, we uh, call upon all of the wisdom keepers that take care of us to be with us in this circle, to just guide my words so that I can be useful to you, Creator, so that I can share the, the many teachings that I have been given over the years to help me, for I'm weak and I'm small, but I'm trying to do something good for myself, that my family might be blessed, that my community might be blessed, that the nations might also be blessed. And in that way, we come together as one community, one family, one people. Hi, hi. So this beautiful centering ceremony has opened us up to uh, the four directions and the teachings uh, and the helpers that I call upon today to help us. Today, I'm going to focus on the teaching uh, that says that in order for humans uh, to find well-being, that these four qualities must be in balance as well, and that these these 
qualities of our being are all interconnected. Uh, that what happens to one part of, uh, of our medicine wheel affects everything else on the medicine wheel. So that in order for us to have this uh, well-being, we must be balanced emotionally, mentally, physically, and spiritually. So we want to think today about our hands and our mind and our heart and our spirit and how we uh, use these, uh, these areas and these teachings to help us find this good way. These teachings have been passed to me through the teachings of the Wellbriety Movement of White Bison and my spiritual parents, Lynn and Teresa Yonison, who were taught by Kainai Elder George Goodstriker. This interconnected life is often called the good life or the good way. And we find it by traveling on a red road. Um, and uh, this way of life in Cree is called Miopimatsuin, uh, the good life. And so we want to discover today or remember, remind ourselves why self care is a sacred responsibility and how the teachings of the medicine wheel can improve our well being. Now, the community is like a forest. In the forest, trees are interconnected by their root systems. And when the trees are healthy, their root systems help nourish themselves and each other. The healthy trees make up a healthy forest. The trees depend on each other. So it is with us. Elder Don Coyes uh, teaches that the key to growing a strong tree is to have a good system of roots and to feed the roots with good medicine. If we put poison in the root system, if we put poison in the soil, it will affect the tree and impact the rest of the forest. Well, this is also true of the human being. So we need to feed our roots with right thinking and right activity. So this is our sacred responsibility to creator and to the community that we're connected to. In this way, we've, we learned that I have a, an opportunity as well as a responsibility to keep my life balanced in order that I might be of help and service to the creator and to my community. Well, how does our culture teach us to do this? You might be asking. And so um, let's think more about that. I want to uh, talk about uh, how uh, White Bison uh, has come to explain this teaching through something that has grown the Wellbriety movement. And uh, I know that many of you are part of the Wellbriety movement already. So while Bridie refers to a sustained grassroots movement that's providing these culturally based healing for the next seven generations of, uh, of not just indigenous people, but all people, uh, that this movement is a part of white bison that Xenia talked about. Um, and since about 1988, White Bison's been developing and delivering uh, culturally based programs for individuals and families and communities. So when we look at the, the forest, currently a lot of our communities look like this forest on the left-hand side, that our soil, because of colonization, that the soil that we're raising and growing our trees in are filled with anger and guilt and shame and fear, that we have uh, seen uh, the effects of colonization and the effects of intergenerational trauma in the trees in our forest. But what our vision is in the Wellbriety movement is the return of our principles, laws, and values, our cultural, natural laws, our traditional values that we will experience in our soil, the, uh, the evidence, um, uh, the, the nurturing uh, medicine of forgiveness, of healing, of unity, and hope. And as a result, we're going to see, and we are seeing, the revival of our culture, that we're seeing healthy women and healthy men, healthy families that are connected to culture and to language. 
Well, you might be wondering, well, well what is well variety? I've never heard of that. I've heard of sobriety. Well, well variety is uh, really a cultural term that encompasses that balanced lifestyle emotionally, mentally, physically, and spiritually. So it's more than a sober lifestyle. It means returning to our principles, laws, and values, to our natural cultural laws, our natural teachings, the restoration of our language and our culture and our ceremonies. We call this walking the red road. And that we recognize that in order for anything to heal and grow, we've got to create and nurture these healing forests that I just talked about. So that's really what I want to talk about today. What is my role uh, in this, uh, in, in uh, creating the healing forest? In the Indigenous worldview, the circle is sacred. Everything we observe in nature functions in a circle. The earth is a circle. The path of the sun around the earth is in a circle. We understand that all of life travels in a circle from childhood to childhood. Uh, this is the most powerful uh, a teaching that we have in our in our uh, traditional way of understanding. The circle represents the Indigenous worldview and illustrates um, this the medicine wheel symbol that helps us to understand uh, what the teachings are in each one of these directions. It really does represent the uh, Native American, the Indigenous worldview, and, and really helps us to really understand the, the interconnection of everything and the circularity of all of life. It helps us to understand and see that there are, is a seen world and an unseen world. Now, different nations have different symbols for interconnectedness. Not every tribe uses the medicine wheel, but many, many do. But there is no one official medicine wheel. So if you have uh, not very familiar with the medicine wheel teachings and you've tried to Google it uh, and you see, oh, the colors are in a different direction, the teachings are in a different direction, uh, whose who's is right? Well, they're all right. Um, and I always say, if you Google medicine wheel and it brings you up with a pie chart, uh, the first thing you need to know is that's not it. The medicine wheel as a pie chart is merely a symbol to kind of help us get our head around uh, the complexity of interconnection. That really think of it as a sphere, think of it as a ball, that's got four more and more, really, there are, are um, uh, seven directions that we talk about uh, when we talk about these teachings, but that these are all spinning and moving circles inside of circles. Uh, well, like the atom, uh, for example, would be more clearly explanation of the medicine wheel. Maybe if you think of it as a web of connections, Chief Seattle is quoted with this saying that I think explains everything that I want to talk about. He says, all things are connected, that, that whatever befalls one part of the web will befall the whole web that man did not create this web of connections. He's merely one strand in it. Whatever he does to the web, he does to himself. That's Chief Seattle. When we look and we really understand and we watch, it's fascinating uh, to watch the spider in the spider web build this web of connection and then maintain this web of connection because everything in her life depends on the condition of this web. Well, so it is with us that everything we do to ourselves will impact the community positively or 
negatively. So let's start looking at where we are strong, where we have the strength, and where we might have some work to do. I want to begin to talk about the medicine wheel teachings from the center of the medicine wheel. That this center of the medicine wheel symbolizes the interconnectedness of all the directions of life. The red, the yellow, the black, and the white, they meet and touch in the center. When our lives are in balance, in our, our mind, our heart, our hands, our spirit, when we are in balance, we experience a profound sense of peace and harmony at the center of the medicine wheel. And life provides us with many choices that will help us to maintain a life of balance or will cause us to become off balance. So we can use the medicine wheel teachings to help us find and maintain our well, our well being. This is self care. For many of us, if you're like me, we often think that self care is this luxury that's only for a few. Uh, that we don't have the time because we're raising kids and we're working in our community and we're trying to uh, bring about change in our communities. But really, if we, when we are in balance, when we see that it is, it's my responsibility to, uh, to be in that place, that's when we're going to be really successful at the work that we do. I'm not sure where that, there's a little blue line. Taylor, can you see that? I'm not sure how that got there. Yeah, I see it too. Okay, you might be able to get it off, um, but it's all right. Let's take a look at, we're gonna begin in the east direction. So the first state of being is in the east, the direction of new beginnings. This is where the sun comes up and brings new life to every being. This is the springtime season and the stage of life is the baby that leaves the center of the universe and enters into the human experience from the east direction. This direction is the, the emotional direction. In the well variety teachings, this direction is represented by the color red, the color of the morning sunrise. And that might not be the same in the territory that you are in, and that's, that's great. Uh, for sure, the emotional state of being is somewhere on that medicine wheel. So here we look at our emotional well-being. And in this direction, this is the direction also of the, every now and then my PowerPoint will freeze, which it just did. So I'm gonna try and go back here. There we go. Hopefully that will let me. Yeah. In the East, we have other elements uh, that are that are um, contained in this direction. It's the life cycle of the baby. It is the element of the air and new beginnings in the well variety teachings. It's the red direction. And it is our emotional state of being. It holds for us in the East the gifts of light and hope and vision and trust and new life come from this direction and can help us to deal with the events that occur in our lives that create stress and fear and anxiety that are, are the, the robbers of our uh, wellness. Developing emotional intelligence then uh, is can help us to avoid becoming frustrated and angry, discouraged, or depressed. 
So when we experience imbalance emotionally, it, it affects our entire well-being because you'll remember that everything is connected to everything. So it's important to look at the things that we can do to balance our emotion. This is the direction where we find the life bringer, the source of all life, which is the creator. So we can face the morning light coming and smudge, uh, do that same little ceremony I did, because that's the ceremony that grounds us, that centers us, brings us back to that place of harmony. Sage is a calming medicine. And prayer is a powerful turning to a power higher than ourselves to bring peace to an anxious heart. Now, this may seem overly simplistic, but letting go of what's hurting me creates space for good things to come into my life. So we can face the east when the sun is coming into the day and give thanks for what is working in our life. To practice self-reflection or meditation, that can help. But for some of us, the idea of being still just makes us more anxious. So don't add the things that don't bring us back to center. Even though everyone's going to say, everyone should do yoga. Everyone should do meditation. If that's your jam and it brings you into harmony, then do it. But maybe drumming or dancing or running is your jam because everything is connected. So what we, what we want to do is recognize that I don't need to add something else to my schedule. I need to look at my schedule and maybe do less. Less is more in my thinking. I have found in my own life that laughter is the best medicine when I'm feeling down. Um, you know, I, I've, I've struggled with depression uh, in my life, and I have found that laughter is really helpful. Sometimes just talking to a trusted person can be an encouragement or spending time with friends or family or maybe not spending time with friends or family can help us in our emotional well-being. But getting outside and reconnecting to the source of life. This is how the creator, this is the gift the creator has given to us as Native American people, to humans. There is a medicine on the land. Throughout the day, we can check in with ourselves and, and notice, am I feeling frustration? Am I feeling irritated? Am I feeling anxious or angry? Or, or am I filled with fear or doubt? And when those feelings come about, we can look at them and make a change. Use my mind to change my feelings. Wow, who knew? So I'd like to encourage you right now to take a minute and I want you to make a list of all the things that make you smile and all the things that bring you joy. So think of everything that makes you smile, everything that brings you joy. And then just today, pick one and do it mindfully, recognizing that you are doing a sacred act of self-care. Do more of what makes you happy. Do less of what makes you feel crazy. Ah, that's just really about reordering the things that I do in a day. I don't really need to wash my hair every single day and blow dry it and curl it. Really, really, I don't. That would give me 10, 15 minutes more to smile and talk to the sun. Well, let's look at the second state of being, the south direction, which is the direction of growth. 
This is the summer season. It's the time of youth when so much is changing and growing. It's an exciting time for healthy self-discovery. When learning is at our, its peak and our mind is filled with innovation and anticipation. The summer season is a time when so many of our important ceremonies are occurring and where community gatherings are strengthening our connections to the creator, to each other, and to ourselves. In the Walbriety teachings, this direction is represented by the color yellow, the color of the midday sun. And this is the direction of our mental health. Now we know that our thoughts control our actions. So it's important to think about what we're thinking about and then do something about the thoughts that might be limiting our vision of a good life. Now, as a person that has struggled with depression, I know that this is easier said than done. It is said that we move toward and become like that which we think about. So bringing the gift of vision from the east direction can have a positive effect on my state of mind. We often get trapped in downward thinking loops of negativity that affect our sense of happiness. It's like being stuck in quicksand and we can't move forward. If my mind is full of these limiting thoughts, I can't focus on my hopes and desires and I sure as heck can't move toward them. So having a clear vision of a good life, Neo Pimatsuin, and recognizing that every struggle is a part of the growing process this can help me from becoming discouraged. So the way we talk to ourselves has a bearing on our self-image. So changing negative self-talk to positive self-talk really does help. And you don't have to get sweaty. So think about the things that are important to me. So align my values. These are the things that will create balance in my life. Being on the land, having our hands in the dirt. All of these things, enjoying nature, will contribute to an improved uh, mental health. Going out and carefully and lovingly and pray prayerfully picking medicines for your smudge uh, will have such a profound effect on your uh, mental health. Well, next, we, to think right, we need to ensure that we're facing the right direction before we take the next step. Now let's talk about the west direction. This is the physical being. Now, of course, this everyone knows this is referring to our body, the physical form that's hosting the other three states of being. The body is an important part of our existence and requires just as much attention as the other parts of our being. Now, the West is the direction of the adult and the season is the fall. It's a happy time of harvest and celebrating the good things in life. It signifies uh, the physical quality of maturing. And this direction is represented by the colors black or blue if you're in Cree territory. Now, most people are already aware of the basics of good health. We need a balance of healthy food, clean water, fresh air, and physical activity to keep the body healthy. So eating healthy and exercise, but that's not just the only things that we need to consider. The amount of mental stress and emotional baggage that we're dragging around with us has a definite scientifically proven impact on our physical health. I've already said it, but all these states of being are connected. So when we do something positive in one area, all the other areas are strengthened. Now, that doesn't mean doing more, but about choosing to do the things that bring about the balance, doing the best things for us. And oftentimes that's going to mean doing less to bring about more. And remember, everything we do begins in the spirit, in the center. That's where the spirit is. So we want to begin anything we do from the center. Par participating in ceremony and singing songs can help your heart and lungs while strengthening our connections to our community and to the creator. 
Walking is probably the most underrated physical activity out there. Just 10,000 steps a day can have a positive impact on our physical and mental health. And swimming or just moving around in water can be an alternative for those that have limited mobility. While well, there's sit and be fit classes on TV. Uh, for those of you that love it, but not me, uh, yoga is, is something that lots of people love to do. I can't get my hot head out of what do you do next? What do I do with my hand? Where's my back supposed to be? It just feels super stressful. But get me behind a djembe drum and I am, I am there. I'm working up a sweat for sure. Breath work uh, is another good option to consider, to, to practice thinking about the breath of life, using our breath to bring us back into center, to manage our stress as well. Well, the North is that state of being the spiritual dimension. Really, I, I should have started here because it is without question the one that has the greatest power to restore us to a balanced life, emotionally, physically, and mentally. The North is represented by the color white. It's the winter season. It's the place of the elders wisdom and knowledge. It's the time of renewal. The spiritual being can be understood as the connection to the unseen world and to the spirits on mother earth. Everything in existence is held together by spiritual energy. And it is this energy that holds all the elements of my being together. So in the indigenous view, the spiritual dimension refers to the connection to the source of life. It's the bada biup in, in Blackfoot, which means the source of life. However you name it, creator, God, higher power, it's all recognizing that force of energy that helps us move through our life, gives us the energy to keep moving. Spiritual well-being is all about maintaining an openness to those energies all around us that are at work in everything, holding everything together. But nurturing this relationship can look any many ways, can look any one of a hundred different ways. But whatever we do to, to open up our, our uh, mind to this beautiful energy, it will deepen our intuition and give us greater sensitivity, a greater sense of recreation, of being recreated and renewed daily. Um, in, and provide that direction in our lives. And it is through our lives that this light and life uh, are, are, is filled so that we can be of use to the creator. Let me say that again. In order to be used by the creator, we must have space filled with this energy, this light and this love that comes only from creator, so that we can share our hope with others. This is how we begin to understand the purpose of our life and increase our happiness as we share this beautiful love and energy with those around us. And again, you know, there's many ways that a person could develop their spiritual life. These practices might include, might include meditation, might include prayer, we know that, well, I've heard that people who run a long time move into that state of, 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 uh, of higher energy when our endorphins are released and have that, some runners explain it as a spiritual high. Uh, I'll just take their word for it. Uh, I'm pretty sure that I'll never be able to run that far and that long to have that experience. But I have had that experience when I fast and when I pray. All these ceremonies like the sweat lodge or the vision quest, all of these things, even the, the smudge ceremony, which is a clearing ceremony, will help me to clear away the blockages 
that are preventing me from experiencing this energy that comes only from the creator. So now you know some of the teachings of the medicine wheel and how the medicine wheel teachings help us to live this balanced life emotionally, physically, mentally, spiritually. You know, one of the things that often happen is we go to a talk on self-care and we think, I got to do this and I got to do that and I got to add this and I don't have enough of that. It's not a pie chart. It's not six of this and six of that will make you balanced. It's about recognizing how the creator has created you to experience this fire of life. Uh, that is what keeps us in balance. It keeps us moving forward uh, and in balance. But it's a choice. It's a choice that we get to make to live this strong life as a balanced person. We, have, we get to do the work. We get to choose because it's all connected. You don't have to do it all because it's all connected. Whatever you do in one area is going to help you maintain and find balance in the other areas because it's all connected. The elders say that you can't give away something that you don't have. So unless I do this, I am really not being the best helper for the creator. If I want to live in harmony with the creator, I'm responsible to keep my life clean and clear. And this is the teaching that an elder shared with me that, that we should think of our bodies, of my being, like I do think about the, the, the pipe. That when I, if you have a pipe, you treat it lovingly, you treat it like a baby, you keep it clean, you protect it. He said, you're the pipe. Your responsibility is to keep your life clean and clear, free from blockages, free from resentments, free from anger, free from guilt, free from shame, so that the creator can take my prayers, can, can connect to the prayers I want to make for my children, for my partner, for my family, for my community, and for the world. So this teaching has really helped me understand that self-care is not, is not selfish. Self-care is my responsibility that I have to nourish to flourish. I kind of love that. I got to nourish to flourish. And it is in that flourishing that we become like that tree with the fountain flowing out of it. And that water spills out into our family and our community and brings life and love to everyone around me. So when we focus on our connection to the creator, look at when am I in balance? When am I in the center? When am I off, off center? And what do I have to do? to restore myself to that center place. This is what we call walking the red road. So don't have to do everything. You've got a list of things that make you smile, of things that make you laugh, that things that bring you joy. I've given you a few suggestions of things you might want to try. And then if you're like me, probably abandoned because they made you too sweaty. And now we're ready to get moving, put our feet uh, to, the, to this beautiful path of following the creator's way, this good life, Mio Pimatsuin, uh, this good life, this good road. So it says, Self-care is never a selfish act. It is good stewardship. Can you imagine if you actually believed that you have a responsibility to take care of yourself? It's not a luxury. It's a responsibility because it's the gift that I have to help someone else. I really love that quote. Sort of, you know, one of those uh, double-edged sword kind of quotes that makes you want to get moving. So if we had more time, I'd probably make you get up 
and move around and uh, and and do a little, you know, a little tree pose today, uh, so that you can find and put your roots deep down into the earth. At the center of the earth is that fire that creates all of life, that connects with the fire that's within us, that makes the energy for my body to move, to help my mind, to help my heart, and to strengthen my serve. So with that, uh, I thank you so much for listening and being here. Um, here's uh, some information about uh, how to find trainings how to find resources, check us out at White Bison, uh, check out the Well Variety store so that you can uh, maybe find some like beautiful earrings that Xenia is wearing or other beautiful items. So with that, uh, I say hi, hi, thank you. And send those uh, relatives uh, back, back to the spirit world. Thank you for being here, grandmothers and great grandmothers. Hi, hi. Thank you so much, Tanya, for this amazing webinar. <laughs> um, well, we can take time to take some questions right now. And if you have questions, you can either raise your hand or you can throw them in the chat box. If you want to um, raise your hand at the bottom, it says reactions and you have an option to raise your hand. People from all over the place. Beautiful. Yeah. Look, you brought all your grandmothers and grandfathers. Thank you, everyone. No questions in the chat box so far. You know, it's, um, I really want to also open up the opportunity because you all are walking this medicine path yourselves. We're all trying to walk on the red road. You know, sometimes I say, sometimes I'm really just hydroplaning down the red road. And my, the best thing I can hope for is to keep it between the ditches. Uh, but that's okay because I'm still moving forward. So if anyone wants to share, we've got about 10 minutes. So tell us about your experience and what makes you smile? What brings you joy and life? Julie, don't make me call on you, but I will. <laughs> um. Ah. Yeah, go ahead, Julie. Thank you. <laughs> it looks like a clap. I thought I was clapping my hands for you. Sorry. <laughs> I, I am, though. Um, yeah, actually, uh, so um, just thinking about all this, I, I got sick last year and uh, ended up in the hospital for about three weeks a month and um, it sparked my self-care journey once again. And I just wanted to uh, uh, that, you know, we're often placed in these um, places where we do have to step back. And if you're not paying attention to what's going on around you, then you're gonna get hit with something, an event to make you refocus on mm. what's important and what you need. And so I truly believe that that's where I was last year. Um, so I actually, I took a, a few months off of work and uh, I wrote out this awesome self-care uh, web. It has everything that we just talked about today, you know, listening to music, smudging, drumming, um laughing you know I, I put on there you know good movies that just make you feel good right you know whether it be cartoons or you know something that will just keep you in that frame of mind that um you know things don't have to be so heavy mm. but it's important I don't like to watch the news or you know even watch scary movies because I feel that just plays on my mind and it doesn't put me in a good space and so I'm I always try to be mindful of 
just, you know, keeping things light, um, being grateful, you know, having um, uh, a gratitude list and yeah. And just, you know, being in the moment, that's my thing right now is just appreciating everything around me, you know, like the snow. Um, I love the snow. So I'm grateful it's winter. <laughs> mm. um, Spoken like a true northerner. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, and, and then reaching out, you know, so that's one of my downfalls too, is just staying connected. Mm. And so seeing your name last week, Tanya, I was mm. like, oh, I miss this lady. So <laughs> I am so grateful. I love how the universe works and mm. brings things out. So thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Julie. Yeah. You know, I didn't, I don't have these teachings because I'm smart. I have these teachings because I did it all wrong, uh, that my life was so toxic uh, before I started on this red road to well variety uh, that I that many people took pity on me and helped me to let go of the stuff that was blocking my life, that I got to face the West and just let it go. Uh, one of one of the teachers uh, said to me, you know, the creator's given us four gifts for balance, for the good life. One is laughter. One is prayer. One is singing. And the other is tears. So sometimes we need to wash. I'll wash it away. Our guilt, our shame, our disappointments with ourselves, all of our past things we wish we would have done different, that these are the gifts. Let me say it again. Prayer, laughter, singing, and tears. Tears are medicine. That is why water is in the west direction, the direction of letting go, the direction of the thunder and the rain and the darkness. For those of you that are working the medicine wheel in 12 steps, it's the direction that we do steps seven, eight, and nine, where we make a list of persons that we've harmed and we start to make up for the things that we did as much as we can and without hurting that person. But you know who gets to be top of the list? Me, myself. I need to allow that water from above to wash over me and cleanse me and help me let go. And then we do the best we can to make up for the wrongs, but staying close to the creator. Creator loves us no matter what. No, we're not, we're not bad. We're not less. We're not broke. We are the creator's tools for the creator's good work. Uh, and so, you know, I, I've heard it said in churches, the creator don't make no junk. Uh, and I, you know, I kind of like that because I think I can really get on that kind of pity party sometimes and, and think negatively about who I am and what I am. Um, I need to come back and be reminded that uh, I'm chosen. I have a purpose. And that purpose is to have good life, not for, for me, not for selfish gain, but so that I have abundance to share with my community, my children, my, my partner, my family, my, my nation. So as they say in Frozen, let it go, <laughs> let it go, let it go. That is the thing we need to do so we can what? Make space. Make space for these gifts that come from the four directions. So yeah, Julie, thank you so much for sharing that, reminding us uh, that we get to, we get to continue our journey. Even when we make mistakes, there's growth in that. There's medicine in that as well. So lighten up, lighten up. Have fun, laugh about it, you know? I just wanted to share something else, Tanya. I was thinking um, on my journey also, you know, you, 
music and how you know we're attracted to certain songs and I know a lot of the times the ones I've been attracted to are sad and just make you cry um, but the one that I found that was the most helpful because my mind wasn't in that space was and, and I shared it in the comments is um, the song called You Say by Lauren Daigle and I would cry my eyes out because it to me it, it was just like the creator singing to me and you know when I first heard it I'm like no I, I'm not worthy I don't mm -hmm. feel that I'm good enough I don't feel that um, you know I don't feel that great and um, now I can sing it without crying and it's just you know it's amazing so and every time I heard it I would you know I, I will let myself cry. And um, so, yeah, it just, it feels good. And I mean, there, uh, yeah, I still have lots of work to do, but um, definitely feeling better about myself than I have in a long time, so. Uh. so much. Any runners in the room? that want to talk about running as a sacred act. I see Tom uh, from Montana. Yeah, it's great to see you. Um, that, that in the Blackfoot tradition, there is a sacred run. And uh, I've been told very little bit about the sacred run, the rites of passage in, in, uh, in the Navajo uh, tradition, that running is a sacred act. Um, me, I'm going to stick to the drum. But uh, any runners in the room that want to talk about running as a sacred act, not running away, running to. Now, somebody said to me, what is the definition of wellness? And uh, the definition uh, from the uh, fitness journal is that you have enough energy to get through the day and an, a reserve for an emergency. So I always think about that when I'm going to the bush, you know, to bear country, that do I have enough energy to manage a race with a bear? Um, because I, that's, that's wellness. That's when I'll know. I'm, I have no intention of putting that to the test, but uh, enough energy to face any emergency. So maybe with that, Xenia, uh, I see that it's three o'clock. I'll turn it back to you. Uh, mm -hmm. feel, feel free to uh, pop your, you know, questions in chat uh, yeah. as well. And I just want to thank each and every one of you for bringing your whole self to the circle today. Uh, your your yeah. uh, mind, your body, your, your mind and your spirit. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Tanya. For your webinar it was really good <laughs> self-care um and thank you everybody who you know made time to join us for the self-care webinar today and again it uh the webinar is recorded so if anyone who missed or you know somebody who would like you know to watch it later uh it will be available probably by the end of this week and uploaded uh on our wellbrighty.com website <clears throat> I just want to say that uh, if you would like to learn more about variety programs, you can reach out to White Bison Office at 719-548-1000, or you can email them at info at whitebison.org. Uh, if you need products, resources, that would be a variety store, and Taylor will throw the links in the chat box. And I just want to remind you that we have lots of online meetings. We have in the rooms Tuesday and Thursday. We also have daily Zoom meetings. It's uh, from Monday to Sunday. They're at 12 p.m. Mountain Time. Uh, Taylor, she will throw the flyer in the chat box. And we also have those meetings in the evening on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday night. Uh, we also have a meditation app now for free. So instead of getting emails, you can just download it, whether you're iPhone user or uh, Android user. And stay tuned because next month we will be having another webinar. We will be have 
our Valbrighty elders sharing stories. And the flyer and more information will be coming out soon. It's usually our Facebook page uh, where we post flyers first. But yeah, we will have a series of storytelling webinar um, next month, which is pretty much tomorrow. <laughs> yes. Uh, so thank you all. Thank you, Tanya. And if you have any questions, you can reach out and thank you for your time. I am going to stop recording.